Okay, um, welcome to uh, this week's lecture. So this week, uh, we will talk about um, how we can design a dashboard. So in the past few weeks, we learned that how we can design uh, different types of the single charts. And this week, we will see that how we can combine those uh, charts together to design a dashboard. So basically, there are the process of discovery. So there are two types of the discovery. And when you design a dashboard, you should ask yourself, so what is the purpose of your dashboard? So uh, the visualizations or dashboard can be used for the exploratory discovery, where we allow users uh, to use those tools to find the answers. Or it can be a uh, directed discovery so that we want to show the answers to a pre-known question, OK? Uh, so that is uh, suitable that uh, for general consumption by a wide variety of the users. Uh, so I think the dashboard can be directed or can be exploratory. So really depending on the purpose of your visualization. So we have heard a lot. So what is a dashboard? Uh, so this is Stephen Field's definition of the dashboard and which is very specific that a dashboard is a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve uh, one or more objects. Okay, uh, he does not believe that something interactive or exploratory okay, is by de definition a dashboard. Uh, so this is one example that dashboard as a directed discovery so that we can see here we are using the bullet chart and also we're using dot warming dot alert colors to show that to call the actions okay and this is another uh, definition of the dashboard okay so for an interactive dashboard or exploratory data visualization Okay, so this still resides on a single screen. Okay, so uh, dashboard should be on a single screen, but provide uh, different views of the data um, based on the user's interaction. Okay, uh, so do you agree with Mr. Few? Okay, so does a dashboard have to be a single screen or not? And does it has to be designed for at a glance monitoring? Okay, uh, I think I will leave the question to you. So, uh, so you can see whether or not the, the dashboard should be a single screen and also do you think the information should be monitored at a glance. So here is a de another definition uh, from uh, the big book of uh, dashboard. Okay, so this is a very broad definition. Okay, so a dashboard is just a visual display of the data used to monitor conditions or to facilitate understanding. So this basically can be a definition of a data visualization. Okay, uh, so basically dashboard, so information is presented by using small, concise, uh, direct, and clear display of the media. So we should have very clear stated message. And each point should be limited to the space that we needed. OK, so it should be customized that to be tailored to the needs of a specific group or the individual. And should have a very consistent layout. OK, um, because the data may change over time but the interface might be consistent. Okay, so for example, when we create a dashboard to monitoring the COVID-19 data, so the, the data changes day by day or even every hours, but our dashboard should be consistent, so that is easy to help us to understand the situation. And the dashboard should be um, designed for specific purposes. Uh, so. So for example, when we talk about dashboard about KPI, so key performance indicators, so different people, they may have care or different aspect, okay, of the data. Okay, 
like CEOs and managers of the of the team. Okay, uh, so for each department, so they are looking at, for example, um, we have data resources, so they have their own data resource, like a building department, they have the uh, the building data set. Okay, sales have the sales data set, etc. And then when we look at the teams, so the team may only care about team KPIs. Okay, so when you when you are creating dashboard at the team level, so they may focus on specific KPIs for their own team. And when we are looking at the manager levels, so they are looking at their the performance of their group or their apartment. Okay. And if we are going to create a dashboard for the CEO, so may, they may uh, care about like uh, 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 the organizational top lines or the risk. Okay, uh, so they may not care about uh, that very specific performance or KPIs for each single team. All right, so let's see some examples. Uh, so this is an example that uh, of a dashboard. Okay, and of course this is not a great dashboard. So think about what are the problems of the of this dashboard, and also how can we, you know, improve this dashboard. Well, of course it has those three D effects. Okay, and also. Some of the colors are not necessary, especially we should not have a gradient um, background color. Okay, so this is a is a better one. So that this dashboard that we remove removes the gradient colors and also those three D effects, and we changed a little few colors. Okay, the other uh, elements are basically the same, but this is clearly a better one that than the previous one. And this is also another dashboard. And we may see those dashboards on diff a lot of websites, especially when they are selling their products and they use a lot of those widgets. OK, so we should be very careful about those widgets. And also, in addition, they are using those traffic light colors. OK, that is not friendly for people with um, vision deficiencies. So using those widgets, so may look like, OK, it's pretty cool at first, but actually they are not very efficient. OK, so first, it's very hard to compare those numbers. OK, it's very hard to compare those numbers. Um, and it's not that accurate. And also, they. Um, they normally will take a lot of space of the dashboard. We know that the space on dashboard uh, are limited. And so for example here, this is a high efficient dashboard. And if you are using those widgets, you can see this widget can take the same space that can accommodate 20 data points in this dashboard. OK. so. OK, so we should be careful about using those widgets. So those are less efficient. And also sometimes it's very hard to compare the data more precisely. OK, uh, so when we are going to create a dashboard, so just keep those principles in mind that the content and also size should match its importance and frequency of the use. OK. Uh, so normally that uh, we can divide dashboard into four regions and this is the most important part and this is the least important part. And we should use colors and formats to draw attentions, okay, especially that we should keep colors consistent. So for the same type of the data, so we should use the same colors, okay. And also, we should visually associate data and content that are related. So if two charts has a logic that are logically related, and we should put them together. OK, and use the needs for user to drive the layout rather than forcing layout with an inflexible grid. OK, 
Uh, so let's look at some uh, studies that talking about the layout basics. OK, uh, so this is uh, eye scanning patterns that when we people look at a web page. And here, this uh, those red areas are the hotspot where indicate that people pay more attention to this web page. We can see clearly uh, this is the F pattern. And this is another study that uh, how people are looking at the web page. Uh, we can see here we have a clearly another F pattern. And this is the eye movement that when people look are reading this newspaper and we can see that people look at the headlines. OK, and the images. OK, uh, and also they just read the first part OK, of those uh, each paragraph. OK, so basically the basic principle is that when we have a dashboard, the most important part of the people pay the most attention will be the top left. OK, and followed by the other two parts. So on the top right and also um, bottom left. And the bottom right is the least part that people pay attention to. OK, so that is the basic rules for the layout of the dashboard. So here, let's look at this dashboard. So this is the CL team dashboard. OK, and let's see how does that look like. So it's not a perfect match, but it works pretty well. So the most important information uh, about overall um, performance is on the top left uh, corner. OK, and this is another CIO dashboard. OK, and how Let's look at how that one matched. So, so this one lines up perfectly. So in the top left corner, we see the most critical information like uh, system availability, which is a uh, CRA would certainly be the most important thing to monitor. And on the system up and running, so the least important information are the project status updates. OK. So the neutral areas are filled with non-system metrics and overall monthly network uh, traffic. So here, this is a web analytics dashboard. OK, and this dashboard is also not perfectly aligned to the full grids, but the big numbers you see here are the top left and the map is also on the top right sorry on the bottom right okay and this is on also another dashboard uh, talking about complaints and we will notice that this is designed to be a a, a four grids and the top section is a little taller than uh, the bottom section OK, so let's see the Tableau's eye tracking research. OK, so that can better illustrate the concept, the theory that we just mentioned. OK, uh, so this is the web analytic dashboard that we saw earlier. And let's see how people will pay attention to this. Uh... OK, so what is interesting is that uh, there is a balance in this design so that the bottom left corner is catching the eye, but the end result of this dashboard is the evenness of the eye scan of the dashboard. Okay, and let's see another one. Okay, so this is another example of the dashboard uh, talking about agency utilization that has large numbers across the top of the dashboard. OK, so it's designed to a grid, but it's not the traditional four grids design. So let's see how the reader's eye do on this one. And we can see that those big numbers catch the attention across the top, as does the color of the staggered area chat that in the bottom right hand corner. 